Okay, welcome back to our video series on making this toy train. In this video, I'm going to make on the back here of the train um, the little magnet piece that's supposed to go on and the peg that holds it on. So, um, we're going to flip over to our drawings and just show that we've got them ready to go to reference um, dimensions and things. Oh, sorry about that. My battery is running low. Let me plug it in real fast. I didn't realize the cord was not plugged in sitting here. Okay. So one thing that you'll notice is that this diameter of the hole that the peg will go through is 0.25 and the peg has also got a diameter of 0.25 and on the back of the train the diameter of that hole was also 0.25. So according to these drawings they're all supposed to be the same. Well we're going to model here and on shape in a way that instead of um, giving a new dimension um, as we build this part, we're just going to use the reference, the hole, and the dimension that's already there. Okay, so we're just going to begin right here in the part studio where I can see the other parts, and I'm going to start a new sketch, and it's going to be on the back, and it's going to feel like we're starting to model um, and add onto the train, but we're really going to tell it to be a new part like we did with the smokestack. All right, so I'm going to hit N to turn normal to that sketch plane. And I want to use that circle and kind of offset, so I'm going to use the project geometry tool right here. Um, if you're not seeing that, you may see the intersection, so hit the little down arrow to switch between tools. And I'm going to select that circle, so that projects that onto our sketch. And then um, we have an offset tool right here. Again, there's a slot tool there, so if you're on the slot, you may need to toggle that one and get to the offset. And I'm going to click on this and um, It'll let me change that dimension here in just a second. I just need to click one more time. Okay, now that offset, this is not the diameter. Um, this is the difference, you know, from a point on the little circle to the point in the big circle right here. So really, um, we need to think about this just for a second. Um, the diameter of this outer part was supposed to be 0.45. Well, the diameter of this is already 0.25, so think about you know, the overall diameter is how much bigger, right? The difference between these two is 0.2. Well, that difference, some of it is here, and the other half is here. So we need 0.1 and 0.1, right? And that's how this offset tool works. And so we're going to add an offset of 0.1. Okay, and that's it. I'm going to hit the little green check mark, and then I'm going to extrude. I'm going to turn this isometric so we can see it pop out. And I'm going to choose that profile. And now, if I don't want this to become part of the train body, you see that it defaulted to the merge scope being the train body, it means it's going to merge and become one with the train body. I'm going to come up here, instead of add, we're going to select new. So that creates a new part. And now the depth of this was 0.25 according to that drawing sheet. So if I kind of click in the gray here, it'll go ahead and preview that. So that looks perfect, and let's accept that. Okay, now for the peg, let's do that one at the same time. Um, I'm gonna do this in two parts, just because of me referencing um, this geometry. And I'm sure I could do it in another way, but you know, there's always more than one way to do something. So I see that basically I've got this same 0.25 as like a cylinder, um, you know, all the way to the underside of um, the head of this hitch peg. And so I'm just going to do a cylinder that's this 0.5 by that. So that should be pretty easy. So I'm going to start a new sketch right on this surface. This is where the head will um, kind of interfere and stop being able to push in any further. I'm going to again just project that circle and that's all I really need and then I can extrude that circle in the opposite direction a distance of 0.5 and this is also going to be a new part and I'm going to go ahead and name these parts so I can keep track of what's what so this one right here I right click and say rename this is the hitch magnet and this part is going to be the hitch peg okay now if I want to create um, this part here using um, like a revolve tool as is suggested here then I need to get a work plane 
that's going to go right through the middle of that. And there's really different ways to do it. I mean, I showed one way was um, kind of referencing a point at the center and then choosing a, a parallel plane in the point. You know, another way could just be an offset plane if I know the distance, so, say, from a parallel plane like the bottom to that. And if we just go back and remember this, um, geometry of our body, we, we actually have that too. So from the bottom of the train to the center of the hole is a offset of 0.375. So just to show another way to do it, I can um, come right here. Again, if the plane tool is not visible, you may look in these expandable menus to look at um, you know what other tools are inside each one. Until you learn Onshape, you're not going to maybe remember exactly which one each of these tools uh, falls under. So, But I'm already on plane here and we're going to be on offset. It's already selected, but this is again in the plane menu is where we can choose the type of geometry we're going to use to select to, to create our new work plane. So it's on offset, which allows me to pick a plane. And the direction here defaulted to, you can see, is down. I'm going to switch that direction to up, um, but we're going to change the distance. So it was 0.375 and that should put it right in the middle of that. Okay. So I've created a work plane in which I can start a sketch. I can press N to be normal to it. And now I can come right in here and I can use my line tool. I can find the middle potentially. I may have to project geometry first. Okay, and then let's try to get some dimensions here. Let's see, I do know I'm going to have a line going that way and a line going this way, and I'm going to have an arc going this way. I'll just kind of, oop, I somehow misclicked that. Okay. Um, without even adding dimensions, I can tell you this. Um, I know that I want the top of the arc to basically become, from this orientation I'm looking at, you know, to, to become horizontal at the exact moment it hits that point. If not, if it, if it if the slope of this hits horizontal and then starts to curve back down, we're going to get a dimple in the middle, right? And if it never becomes horizontal, we'll have a point. Okay, kind of like that. And we want it to be a nice smooth top. And so that will happen and be achieved when this center point of the arc lies on this line, that line we're going to revolve around. Okay, and so an easy way to fix that is just to make this point be vertical to that. Uh, did not, didn't let me maybe, okay, so I'm still learning on shape too. Um, let's go coincident, let's say, um, there you go. All right, just that point has to be on that line. Now, that doesn't constrain the size of my arc necessarily. Okay, so let's go back and look at our dimensions, what else they gave us. So they gave us that the overall length of this peg was 0.65. I've already gone the 0.5, so I just need an additional 0.15. So we can dimension this distance here to be 0.15. I gotta figure out like, you know, what, what thing can I pull and move on to change size, you can see, okay. So that at least lets you, the fact that I have blue tells me it's not fully constrained. Um, it's just a matter of kind of what could I pull on so I can at least, you know, illustrate. Okay, so the other thing they gave me here is they said the spherical radius is 0.208. So that's what we're gonna use as the radius of my arc, 0.208. And Okay, I hit the pause button there for a second and you may figure that out listening and watching, but I had a slight kind of just, you know, hesitation thinking this didn't look right, um, but it is. I, I don't know why I was picturing that this was going to overhang that, um, but that has a diameter of 0.45 and this ends up with a diameter of 0.4, which is slightly smaller, so it should be within the magnet. Um, and I, you know, I knew that was there. I just, 
it just caused me to hesitate for a second. So, so that looks right. And I'm going to accept that. And we're going to go ahead and choose the revolve tool. And we're not going to have it on new. This is going to be adding to an existing part. And so under merge scope, maybe we've got to, um, let's see, hitch peg. There you go. Okay. Um, I clicked on that and then just clicked the part and that added it. Um, it's on add. And so now faces and sketch regions to revolve. It's asking, I'll click that. And so it knows what I'm going to select. And now revolve axis. I'll click that and then come here. And I get it. That's it. Um, if you want to change the colors of these parts for visual, just kind of appeal, you can right click on this just like I could have renamed. You can go to edit appearance and you can give it a different color if you want. Um, I have not yet messed with materials, but I did see, you know, that there's a material library to some degree. Um, at least I saw in the menu that there was. Um, so you can come in here and choose, you know, something else. Um, you know, this is just a toy train, so that little piece, uh, that might actually be a metal piece in there. Um, can I just search steel? I don't know if that affected the appearance. It at least probably is for like material properties for understanding density, weights, that kind of stuff. Um, see properties I haven't even clicked on properties before what do they give you in here hitch peg you know an inventor we're used to going to I properties and being able to get like the mass properties um, so we're done with making those two parts I'm just kind of checking this out real quick so uh, properties didn't really give me that I that's something that I'll look into like how do we um, similar to an inventor I properties wanting to know like surface area volume um, you know, density, those things, weight, how do we get that in on shape? So figure that out for the next video. Hope you guys are doing well.